up, all you sexy nerds? Grizzly McBee here, and you are listening to and watching Nerd is a New Sexy Entertainment, the podcast, episode number 175, the mini boss episode. Mini boss. Today I'm joined by the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend. You love him even though he's gaming, Mr. Wildfire One. You know, when you said the man, the myth, the legend, this time I thought you were going to say Miss, Miss Fandom Maniacs. <laughs> But yeah, that's me. She is also here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always here. I'm just always in the background. I like I like that. I got I got the magic fucking opening, and she's like, oh yeah, there's Phantom Yeah. Yeah. So no, he just the... said we love him, but even though he sleeps all day. <laughs> hey, some of hey, us. Hey. Act. Some of us work nights, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and some of us are insomniacs, and haven't been yeah. able to sleep since high school. So fuck you. Now, not all of us are on the happy drugs. High five. <laughs> <laughs> when Wild and I worked together, we were on different shifts. One of us would come in to relieve the other. And we'd look at each other and go, so do you sleep? No. You want an energy drink? Yeah, sure. Why the fuck not? Because <laughs> I, think, I think I was doing, you were doing the afternoon shift. And I was doing. And you were doing graves. I was yeah. doing either graves or swings. And. I'd come in and you'd leave, and I'd be like, "And yeah, that, that's how it was." Did you sleep? No. You want an energy drink? Yes. <laughs> I, I heard swing swings, and so I'm guessing Wild's a th- swinger. Goddamn right, I am. This podcast is going to be about the Lord of the Rings Two Towers. The two Towers. Yes. Book versus movie. Yeah. And Phantom's going to do a lot of talking. A lot of talking, because I, I have, it's been years since I've read the book, and it's been a few years since I've seen the movie. I've been, I've been, I, I even talked about like, hey, we're gonna watch, we're gonna watch the movie before we did. No, shit happened. We got busy. I mean, there's, there's a reason why the podcast didn't come back, come back on like as soon as I got back from vacation. We all got, we all had shit to do, unfortunately. Oh, you know what we Friend. forgot? You know what, what we forgot? What did we forget? This episode of the podcast is brought to you by the Olympics. <laughs> Those fuckers aren't giving us no money. <laughs> I got five dollars off this case of beer. Well, good for you and your fucking Olympic beer. No, no. ceremonies today actually, and Tom Cruise jumped off the, did like a stunt. Did he for land? The ceremony. And the next Summer Olympics is in L.A. <laughs> oh fuck that! Good luck. <laughs> Guess where I will be. <laughs> Not in L.A. Not in L.A. <laughs> hey, it's coming back to Salt Lake City in 10 they, years. But they want to the so. do it in summertime, the summertime Olympics. Let's just underline that in you know Los Angeles. Yeah, you know how many like teams are going to be coming up my way to go to the Redwoods and are all going to pass out from heat exhaustion? Yep. Because this entire Summer Olympics, it has been 100 plus every fucking day. Yep. Most days, 110 plus every fucking hottest, day. Hottest here this summer was gauged 118, and that's mm-hmm. when I was in Oregon. Yeah, lucky fuck. Yeah. It was still 103 there. Yeah, we get the yeah, Winter Olympics get... here in well, 2034, yeah, 20, 20, which is going to be nice. All you guys have is snow. Yeah. But think about it this way. They will have to clean L.A. up for the Summer Olympics. No, they won't. And right now, it's shitty. No, they won't. And they, can't use, they can't use the Coliseum. Yeah. <laughs> so where the hell are they going to build? They gotta figure, they're going to have to figure something out. That's the Olympic Committee's problem. No, they're, they're not cleaning LA. shit up. It's funny that they think that L.A. is going to clean up for them. No, nope. L.A. is just going to be like, ha-ha, and you're just going to be stuck that way. I know who will I be mean, doing all their building, though. My cousin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, they had to clean the Seine River for Which... the triathlon, and it still had E. coli in it. Without further ado, I guess we'll start talking about what fandom is probably itching to talk about. Yeah. Harry Potter. <laughs> and the two I mean, towers. Like... Hey, I could do a what's the difference between Harry Potter and Harry Potter movies and books if we wanted to do that. <laughs> you, you know what, fandom? Vita Kadivi! Vita Kadivi! Vita Kadivi! Vita Kadivi! 
It's Ooh, Leviosa, not Leviosa. What about Phoenix Deletus? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was that was so off the wall. We were so intoxicated. <laughs> In Gorgio. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Okay, Lord of the Rings, the Two uh, Towers, second book. What do we know? Where do we leave off on the first movie, fandom or book, movie, what have you? Oh, and... Last time we ended, uh, we uh, ended with Sam and Frodo leaving the Fellowship, and we skipped over something that's in the movie but not in the book, and that is Boromir's death. Baromir ah. dies at the beginning of Two Towers. Okay. Kind of goes down the same. He confesses to trying to take the ring from Frodo. There's orcs around him everywhere. He's pierced by the arrows. Uh, and he tells them they got... Uh, Gim Pippin and Merry got taken by orcs. You are going to say Gimkin and Merry, weren't you? I... I so Aaron, Gimli and Legolas decide to go after Merry and Pippin and let Sam and Frodo... So do the thing so that's where the fellowship breaks off so i am going to do this how the book kind of did it okay i'm gonna talk about what aragorn gimli and legolas was doing the merry and pippin and then sam and frodo and schmeagle uh schmeagle schmeagle so there were actually three groups of orcs that took merry and pippin there was the ones from isengard ones from mordor and then ones from the uh, Moria, and Moria was following them to get revenge on Aragorn for killing their chieftain. So they had no, they did not care about the war or the ring or anything. They were just like, hey, he killed our dude, we want to kill him. So that's kind of what they did. And then there was two, so there was the Moria and Isengard orcs, and they were bickering, because it's Ugluk is the chief of the Isengard orcs and then uh grishnak is the chief of this group of orcs from mordor and isengard who all was who all was there so ugluk is basically going no we're taking him to we're taking them to isengard and they have to be alive and unspoiled uh, they still give Mary this medicine, which actually helped them because in the books they had to run with the orcs. Not they weren't carried the mm -hmm. whole time; they were running with the orcs, being forced to run. And Grishnak, when the Riders of Rohan attack later that night, outside of Fangorn, Grishnak takes that opportunity to come over, and he's kind of feeling up, feeling. He's feeling up. Pippin, yeah, basically. Yeah. The word, yeah, the word he the. Tolkien uses to describe it is groping at him. Yeah. Because he's looking for the <laughs> ring and that, to play along with it. trying to <laughs> 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 to get so he starts make... Pippin is smart like he starts making that go the golem noise. Okay. So Grishnak thinks he has the ring and P Mary P uh, plays along and they get Grishnak to be able to unbind them a little bit and carry them away from all the other orcs. I almost said dorks. The dorks? Which were, hey, it works. The dorks. Uh, the dorks of Isengard. <laughs> and Ma Ma Pippin a while back managed to untie his, get his hands untied and pretended to retie them. So when a uh, rider of Rohan kills Grishnak, he's able to uh, get himself <laughs> out and then get Mary out. And they go into the wood. I kind of got off track of where, what I was doing. But that's okay. We're t so that's just kind of the orc situation. Aragorn, Gimli, and Legolas. Legolas. They follow them. And the night before they run into the Riders of Rohan, they're camping kind of in Fangorn Forest. And it's so... F and they see this bent old man walking around their camp. And Aragorn gets up and goes, hey, you come join us at the fire. And then the old man just disappears. <laughs> yeah, that's not, that's not fucking weird. So that kind of freaks them out. And then they run into the right, I, the, I can't remember if it's before or after that that they run into the Riders of Rohan. But when they run to the, into the Riders of Rohan, 
basically the same conversation happens. So Aragorn has his sword with him, the Narsil's reforged. And so, uh, Eowyn is, not Eowyn, uh, Amir is, what is like, we'll raise our swords up together in battle at some point. And so they get the two horses from them, and they go off and they look for the orcs and stuff. And then in the movie, when they find the orcs burnt, uh, Viggo Mortensen, when he kicks a helmet, he screams. And the reason why he screamed that loud in anguish and fell to his knees is because he broke his toe kicking that helmet. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. You told me that story. Yeah, he breaks his toe kicking the helmet. They're going through Fangor and trying to find Merry and Pippin. And then they see this old man in, like, cloaked and, and stuff and gray. And he sits there. He's sitting down. And they think, they probably think, they think it's Sar Saruman. And he's like, come join up. Come join me. Come talk to me. And so they all try to attack him. And it, and Gandalf shows himself because it's Gandalf the White. But with Gandalf, his clothes were so bright white and like this angelicness that he had to wear gray still or else it would blind people. Would you say he was like zestfully clean? Why? <laughs> For the love of God and everything. <laughs> he, he, he bleached his grays. <laughs> Yes, and endure my bad jokes. So he basically, so Gandalf tells them uh, about the Balrog, how he fought the Balrog and stuff. And so when Gwai here, the eagle, the eagle picked him up, it, it, uh, it saved him after the Balrog, and he came back to life. He took him to Lothlorien, but he had just missed the Fellowship. Ah. Get they ask him, "Hey, was that you last night walking around the forest?" And Gandalf's like. No. And there's a few theories about this. So either it was a Phantom of Saruman, like Gimli thought it was. Kind of, like, projecting himself. Gandalf was is just fucking with them, because it's Gandalf. Or it could have been Radagast the Brown. But... That was... Radagast really was one of the guys from, like, the book that wasn't in the movie. The original. Yeah, he wasn't... Yeah. That's what it was. I do remember that. Redagast the Brown was known because he shed his pants constantly. No, birds shed his pants. Yeah. And his beard. It was the birds. Hair. But what about what about when he shed his pants? I don't think it, uh, when the spiders evaded uh, his home. Sure. Uh, there you go. That that honestly, that's probably where I'd get, you know, wildfire the Brown. <laughs> 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 Though I am aiming for white, I guess. Eh, more gray. So, what happened next? So, Gandalf's like, okay, we need to go to Adaras, because there's some shit happening there. So they ride to Adaras, which is the main city of Rohan. And they get taken up to where uh, King Thadred is, and they have to put their weapons down, like in the movie. Uh... But Aragorn is literally like not wanting to let his sword go because it is it's it's Anduin, it's the flame of the West, it's the one that shows he's the king of Gondor. <laughs> yeah. So he's basically like anyone else who touches it but me, it will die. <laughs> because because in the book, he never got rid of it. Yeah, he he always had it, and the guard of the gates like of the door is like okay, no one will touch it, and they t try to take Gandalf's staff. Doesn't happen. He becomes this, um... So he walks in. They walk into Edoras. Into... I can't remember what the hall is called. The Hall of Dees. The Hall of Dees. <laughs> so they're greeted by King yeah. Thaden. And so in the movie, it's shown that Saruman is kind of possessed. Thaden, but in the book, it's more like, uh... Wormtongue has... Kind of like this silver tongue to be able to... A warm tongue, if you would. Yeah, to be able to kind of put doubt in, like, he had the power of of speech is the main thing Saruman, <laughs> Saruman can do. Which is why Gandalf always would war later, later on warns his voice is his wep only weapon now. So Gandalf 
kind of breaks the spell over Thaden, going, hey, this is what's happening. And... Wake up, bitch. They take him outside, and Grima is freaking out. So... He's like, your hands will feel better if you grasp your sword. And they go look for the sword, because Grima <laughs> hid it somewhere. Stop. What are you talking about? This is I my can soul. Stop. This is my... <laughs> My hands will feel better. No, my sword will feel better if my hands grasp my sword. What's different is uh, Amir was never banished like he was in the movie. He okay. was just imprisoned. So okay. they go release him, and they kind of cut. He comes up and he backs up Gandalf and everyone. And so Keen Thaden right away uh, decides to go to war. There's no him going. Okay, we're gonna go to Helm's Deep and we're gonna take the woman and children with us. That mm -hmm. wasn't what happened he immediately wanted to ride to isengard that was movie magic yeah uh they i understand why they did things to adapt certain ways uh but it's whatever they so warm tongue is actually given the chance to redeem himself right then and there to ride to war with thaden mm -hmm. of course he, he chooses not to he spits at the king and then runs off to saruman like a little hawk to a yeah Hawk. Good. He hot tours at the bad. king. There you go. So they ride to Isengard, <laughs> and they meet a rider coming back saying they've been overrun with orcs, do not come. And so that's when they decide to go to Helm's Deep. Gandalf breaks off from there to go find more soldiers in another direction. Stop He's like a out. cat. That's why. He right. can't sit still. So he runs... So they get ready to fight at uh, Helm's Deep, and if I I think there are women, women and children there from like different settlements that went there to kind of be safe there. But Edoras was never evacuated. Uh, Awen is actually left in charge there by the people of Edoras because they're like we trust her because she's our shield maiden of Rohan, and so she she can maiden my gets, shield. Chicken ring my bell. <laughs> ring my bell. I am no man. <laughs> God, what, why are you stopping? I can't see your face, fandom. I don't know if you're if you're laughing or if you're I'm, di I'm dying. I'm dying inside more than I already Okay. Am. Uh, well. So at Helm's Deep, they the fight. They're prepping for the fight. And no elves show up, because in the movie, an army of elves shows up to help. They actually have a decent uh, enough men at Helm's Deep at this point to just hold it off until Gandalf gets there. So it does start raining, and Amir uh, and Aragorn are on the battlefield. And when they're trying to get back up to the tower, it's funny that this small figure comes and saves Amir's butt from an orc, and it's Gimli. And they're like, we had no idea you were there. I lost track of the dwarf. <laughs> The dwarf is always the hardest to see. You know, Grizz, I think I think you would make a good Gimli. And I think you would. Uh, no, I, I would be more like the um the werebear from the Hobbit. The oh, no. bor bo boring. Yes. I guess I could see that too, but I think it. I, I it's the beard, man. I mean, you're, you're rocking the dwarf beard. I already with, have the dwarf. Beard. With boring, bo boring. I think that I can't. Uh, he, when he when he comes in and drops into the f battle of five armies, that's basically it. He wins. The, he wins it for him. Anyway, the, the Hobbit trilogy is a whole different. Yeah, it's a whole different monster. Whole different monster that I don't that my heart can't take at the moment. Uh, I still haven't watched all the movies for the Hobbit trilogy. I read yeah. the books. I got the books that way, but they're actually behind me now. So they get back. Gimli kind of gets lost in the shuffle and. Legolas and Gimli are still having their competition. They still have the competition in the book of who, how many they killed, how many orcs they kill. So Gimli uh, is actually brought after he gets lost into the shuffle. He's found by some people, and he's brought to help kind of re reinforce the wall because since he's a dwarf, he kind of knows some stone masonry and stuff to do that. Oh, okay. Hold the door. Yeah. Hold the door. Hold the door. <laughs> Wrong universe, sorry. Yeah, I know. So they get back to the keep. They kind of lose Aemir. Uh, 
in the sh in the battle too. And Thaden is actually the one who suggests to ride out at dawn with Aragorn. Not in the movie, it's Aragorn that says, "Have a last stand with me, ride out." Uh, but in the book, it's uh, Thaden. Huh. Thaden, I also think is a lot older in the book uh, than he is in the mo than he's portrayed in the movie. I have to admit, I haven't read any of the books. You've seen the movies, though. I've seen all the movies. More people. And More so, people. Aragorn walks out, kind of parlays with the orcs a bit. They kind of have a little chat, like, surrender and blah, blah, blah. And then they all ri ride out. And then Gandalf shows up with, their re with the reinforcements he found from one of the other generals who was on the other side of Rohan doing fighting some huh. orcs and stuff. He comes back, and they drive the orcs into this forest that just magically popped up out of nowhere! You gotta love how that happens, huh? <laughs> and they just hear screaming and crunching, and this happens in the movie, too. And one of the funniest things... I think it's either Legolas or Gimli that says it when they're going through the woods to get to go to Isengard from there, is I wonder what happened to the orcs, and I'm like... The trees ate him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's no one said buts about it. The trees just ate him. They found the Whomping Willow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Again, wrong universe. Yeah. A lot of stuff that's shown in the book at this point with them is actually in the Return of the King movie, so I'm going to save it for the Return of the King movie. Okay. So we're going to switch back to Merry and Pippin. Yeah. Merry and Pippin are running through. They're kind of walking through Fangorn. And they find a little stream, and they're drinking, and they start talking. Are they drinking alcohol? They wish they were, but it's just water. Uh, they're talking, and then they hear they get interrupted by Treebeard, who's just chilling out. Good old and Treebeard. Treebeard never wow. confuses them for orcs, like he does in the movie. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a, that's an interesting choice of why they did that. But uh, so they hang out for a little bit with Treebeard, and Treebeard's like, "Okay, I'll I'll keep you with me." And uh, so there's a song of, like, all the creatures that the ends know, and the hobbits aren't in there, so he decides to add the hobbits to the song so they know. And Treebeard actually, they have a, has an ent house, it's called an ent house, and so they go there. A house for a tree and... to live in. Yep. Who would have thought? I think it's a ginormous tree that's kind of hollowed out, it's uh, from what it's described. A tree living si inside of another tree. So he lives in his ancestor? I believe that's called incest? In like incestor! Too soon? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, no. No, that's a that's a the House of the Dragons podcast. Or anything oh, Game please. of Thrones. Anything yeah. Game of Thrones. Again, wrong, wrong show, wrong podcast. Wrong show, wrong pod. We already did a podcast on Game of Thrones. Fuck. We did three podcasts on Game of Thrones, if I remember correctly. Grizz. Uh, maybe? Is it highly possible? Yeah. Yes. I've drank it since then. I, I couldn't tell you. But back, up, back to Lord of the Rings and... Less incest, except for the whole Treebeard thing living inside his aunt. <laughs> they talk, they're talking to Treebeard, and Treebeard, Beard, at this point, Treebeard in the book knows what Saruman is doing. He knows Saruman's destroying stuff. Also, during the, the chap, this chapter, with the chapters with Treebeard, there needs to be a drinking game of how many times he says don't be hasty. Or just hasty at all. Well, how about we not have alcohol poisoning? <laughs> oh yeah, you'd be drunk pretty quick. I I did that already on like the Goonies episode where we drank every time someone said One Eyed Willie. We were fucked up halfway through the movie. <laughs> because so he's he, he already knows what Saruman's doing. Well, in the movie he doesn't, and Mary and Pippin are trying to convince him. In the book, uh, Treebeard's basically like, yeah, I want to go to war. I want to attack Isengard. But 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 that's too hasty. I have to still have the end move. Uh, which is the meaning of the ants. The ants do things slowly. Yes. By the way, so, Barry and Pippin, that, tre that branch you're sitting on is my pecker. <laughs> <laughs> Considering they're always up on top, that'd be very weird. It's a weird pecker. <laughs> oh. They keep walking to, um, so the next morning, they leave Treebeard's place and they go to the ant moot. 
and at the ent mode, there's a lot of ents, and then there's this one ent who actually has, ar- who's like, I think the youngest of all the ents, and has already decided to go to war. The baby like, I don't need. I, he's like, I don't need the conversation, this conversation. I already know what I'm going to do. And in the end, they end up choosing to go to war. They go to Saruman's place, and they fuck shit up. As ants do. Yeah. They should. Yeah. And during this time, uh, when Gandalf breaks away from the group. As um, he always does. Uh, he actually goes to Isengard after Merry and Pippin and the Ents had beat Saruman and went and talked to Treebeard. And that's why the horde of the tree, all the trees that moved, forests that moved to help attack uh, at Helm's Deep. So that's where we're, Mary and Pippin are left off at. Now, Frodo, Sam, and Gollum. Yeah. So, Frodo and Sam, they're lost. They know someone's trying to follow them. Smeagol attacks them like the, he does in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the movie, they have it, uh, when they capture him, they have the rope tied to his neck. But in the book, it's tied to his ankle. And I think in the animated still... one, it was tied to his ankle, too. I could be yeah. wrong. Uh, he's still screaming up the storm uh, because it burns his precious. Uh, oh, because he doesn't like anything that's elven, fucking yeah. elven. Yeah. It's because of the the rings poisoned him for so long. And when they have this conversation, this is another moment that in the move that shows in the books just how much more br- stronger I guess Frodo's character is. In the movie, he's very brave and stuff, but. In the books, he kind of has more of that presence, I want to say. Because it Sam describes it when he's making the deal, like, because uh, Gollum's like, I we swear on the precious. And Frodo's like, no, do not swear on the precious. That is too treacherous. And so they're like, okay, we swear to the master of the precious. And so when they're having that conversation, Sam describes Frodo as growing tall and... And stuff like, and Gollum kind of like shrinking, like, kind, of, kind of like showing do- Cow- the dominant like, like, or yeah, cowering down. He basically is like, if you break the uh, this oath at all with all on the pressure on the ring, you're 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 fucking dead, no matter what. Which basically is what happens. Either way, Sam's like, I don't trust him, but they don't really have a choice. Potatoes. To... Yes, <laughs> Gollum Hello. still has to has to lead them through they get to the dead marshes they see the wraith on wings to me it seemed like in the book Mm -hmm. sam wasn't as harsh to go uh he didn't like him he didn't trust him but he wasn't as harsh because yeah it seemed like in the book in the book he was he was untrusting but he wasn't like as mean in the movie he, he seemed more mean like he didn't like Gollum, like at all which I guess I, I could see I could see that difference. And so they get through the dead marshes. The whole thing with Frodo falling into the dead marshes never happens. Uh, Frodo does treat Gollum kinder, and that's kind of what makes him kind of some the the Gollum side of him pipe down and the Smeagol side come out more, which is what Gandalf said happened when he talked to him back in Mirkwood. When he was in prison in Mirkwood, when they treated him nicely, he actually acted like a nice guy. Warm. Yeah, Frodo's resting. Sam's like, "Okay, we need to make some food." And this is the with the rabbits. So he fought fa- Gollum finds rabbits, and in the movie, he had uh, Sam takes both of the rabbits and cooks them. That doesn't happen in the book. He st- he lets Gollum still have one of the rabbits. And he cooks them, and Gollum helps him find potatoes. Uh, potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> they that conversation still kind of happens. Like, what's you doing to? What's he doing to it? Stupid fat hobbit stuff like that kind of mm-hmm. still happens. Uh, and that's when they see the the Mumakil or the Oliphants, and they see uh, Farmer's Rangers take him out. The Ephelant. Oh yeah, I, re- I remember fighting the Ephelant. Yeah, the Oliphant. Are you... And this is when Faramir's rangers show up, and they never take him to uh, Osgiliath. Osgiliath in the books was never recaptured, okay. like they show in the movie. 
So yeah. that was a lie. Yeah. And Faramir's pretty chill with them. He never wanted to take the ring to his father. They basically escort them to a point where they can kind of leave and go to where they need to go. Uh, the thing with the golem being in the forbidden pool still happens. Then that's where he can where the golem side comes back out. But Faramir was never wanting to take the ring back to his dad. He's like, no, I know what this isn't a good idea. We need to, you need to go destroy that thing. And that is where Sam, Frodo, and Gollum leave off. And one thing that's different here is in the book, in Two Towers, Sam and Frodo fight Shelob in Two Towers. They do not fight in Return of the King. You know, I do remember that too. Like, because yeah. the third, I was I was always waiting for that in the second movie, and it never happened. And then the third movie comes around, and they do it there. And I'm like, that's just that's that seems a little too late. Yeah, and also another thing that doesn't happen is that Frodo never sends Sam away. The whole thing with Gollum trying to get rid of Sam doesn't happen. Yeah, but that, uh, honestly, I'm going to say that was actually a pretty decent addition. Yeah. Yeah, um, Frodo just kind of runs off on his own in Shelob's cave, and then Sam catches up to him, and he's already wrapped up and got stung in the butt by Shelob. Uh, that, just, that just goes to show you Frodo, Frodo shouldn't have left his friends behind. Yeah. One thing that's interesting is Tolkien did confirm there is a chance there was a chance for redemption of Gollum in a he wrote this in a letter during this moment when Gollum is kind of pawing at Frodo while they're about to go into Shelob's cave. In the book, Sam's aggressive with him. But uh Tolkien said if Sam had approached the subject differently, seeing how Gollum was kind of caring for Frodo. And kind of said, yeah, I, I get you're caring for him and stuff. That would have made Gollum not do what he, not betray them. But no matter what, Gollum still would have sacrificed, would have died to destroy the ring after Frodo tried to take it at the end. Which That's I think is interesting. I don't know. I think, I think Gollum turning at the end was just a good show of how like powerful the ring was. As far as, yeah. um, as far as like how, how it mentally just fucks you. Does that yeah. mental judo, and your next thing you know, you can't live without it, even even if it's just using you to get to point A to point B or whatnot in your life. It's just a good example of how how powerful that ring is in general. I think it's interesting how he, Tolkien basically said, if Sam had shown this one little bit of kindness to Gollum, Gollum wouldn't have Frodo wouldn't have gotten stung by Shelob. So that's and all one, Sam's fault. And so, like Sam. one thing Ever. that would have been different is uh, at the end of everything, uh, mm -hmm. since Sam was a ring bearer for a little bit, carrying the ring and give it, to give it back to Frodo when he was rescuing Frodo, which we'll talk about in the next book, Sam got to, was given the privilege to sail west too uh, when he got old enough. Uh, he wouldn't have been able to do that. Hmm. So that's the thing that would have changed. But yeah, that's basically where it ends with uh, Frodo being carried off by the orcs and stuff and Sam going, he's alive. How could you let them take him when he's alive and all that? Uh, I don't think I ever, 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 ever want to do a Rings of Power podcast now. Why is the that? Cast basically, con the, ba the cast during Comic-Con basically confirmed there's going to be a sex scene between Sauron and Galadriel. And, hey, Sauron's got to get some too, you know. And I am like, nope, fuck that. That's disrespectful to Tolkien's work. So even more. So okay, I don't think I'm gonna watch it. To be honest with you, I'm not. I've got enough shitty things I gotta watch. <laughs> uh, the it's the He Man season three is gonna be one of them, and I'm not. We're not doing a Borderlands movie. <laughs> I'm. I refuse to watch that. I've. I. I looked. It looked. It looked like it had a little bit of potential, but from what I've heard, they just shit all over it. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. So. We need to do Deadpool and Wolverine, though. Eventually. But if you have any ideas that you'd like us to do for the podcast, uh, maybe a review, food review, uh, show review, game review, uh, product review, uh, just let us know. Uh, there's a number that you can call. That number is 559 997 six eight zero three 
you can call us, leave us a message, tell us what you think. You know, tell us you love us, tell us you hate us, don't matter. Uh, this is the end of the podcast. We'll see you guys next week where we talk about The Last of Us, the uh, TV series on HBO Max. Or just Max now, right? It's just Max. Anyway, we'll see you next week. Till then, stay nerdy. Stay sexy. Always. Always.